Hello and welcome to these 32 talks about composing music. I'm going to be speaking to musicians, people who play instruments, but people who have probably never thought of composing. And so if you do play an instrument, you'll find that you actually you have everything you need. And if you want to compose, and if you find the time, I think I can help you just break the ice and get started. But first of all, we're going to have to find a few definitions and agree on some of the things we do and do not agree with. We all agree in the whole world about the octave, which is that notes like this, I'm playing C's, they all sound more or less the same, they just get smaller as they go higher. Now theoretically, I could keep going forever, just doubling the number of vibrations, and all of these things would be a C. Even if I got into the area of, say, radio waves, uh, and the same way I could go halving the number of vibrations, these would still also be a C, even if I got into an area where, of course, these were no longer re recognizable as sounds. And so, by a strange coincidence, we discover that the vibration of the Earth around its own axis and the regular frequency of the BBC World Service all reduce, if we want to bring them to this octave, to a note slightly, slightly lower than this G. I don't want to make more out of that, but it's a rather nice convenient coincidence. Now you're going to want a piano and or a keyboard, because we're going to do some harmony exercises at some stage. And we're going to talk about tonality to start with. Later on, we'll get on to more contemporary composers. But first, we really need to know exactly what we mean by C major and what we mean by these 12 notes that we use in between the octaves. Now, it isn't every culture in the world that divides the octave into 12. On the contrary, the Indian traditional music uses 22 intervals and Bali uses only five. And there are lots of different other cultures that use different scales and different systems. But we're going to be limiting ourselves to these 12 notes, and we're going to also agree that this, although it's C sharp and D flat, that they are the same note on the piano, and for the purpose of harmony, we're going to be calling them the same note, although every string player will tell you that's not true. After the unison, which is the same note, and the octave, the next most harmonic interval is the perfect fifth. Now, if I go up the seven octaves through all my C's, I reach a note which must be the doubling of the doubling of the doubling of the doubling, and so on. And I can also get there by going up a cycle of fifths. Now the fifth has a proportion of three to two, as opposed to two to one, which is the octave. Uh, by a strange coincidence, we arrive at almost the same number up here, if we do the maths, but unfortunately not quite the same. And this difference was already known to the ancient Greeks as the comma of Pythagoras. But we've learned somehow to live with compromises so that we can say that all of those 12 notes can then be reduced to the 12 notes, the 12 semitones, of my octave. Now you probably know that the cello has four strings, which are tuned like this in fifths, and each of those notes, if I, you play the flageolet notes, which are available on the open string, I arrive at something that this series of notes and so on. I keep going on, getting higher and higher, the intervals get smaller and smaller, and of course the notes become more and more difficult to play. But these notes are actually illustrating what's called the harmonic series. And 
It's obviously a law of nature, a physical law, because you get exactly the same notes if you ask a horn player to play his lowest C and without changing the fingering, just to play the notes which are available by changing his embouchure. So this uh, first octave just has the one note of the harmonic series, the next has a fifth in there, and then it gets interesting. The third octave has something well, that's obviously a triad, and that's obviously a seventh chord. And the fourth octave, there's a slight problem with this eleventh one, but otherwise, we have the notes of our major scale. And I'm very much a believer that the major scale is something very basic to our whole musical experience, because it is contained in every single note which vibrates, because that note also has the notes of the major scale and the triad and the seventh in it. So if I take the four open strings and take all of those notes from the third octave, I get... Okay, those four triads and those four seventh chords. And then if I just go up the D string to the fourth octave, I'll find a major scale and I can use all of those notes now. If I reduce them to this octave, I can simply say I have the chords of D major, G major, A seventh, and I have a scale all derived from the harmonic series. Well, I'm in business. So that was the first of these 32 talks about composing. We're talking about basic skills, obviously, at the moment, but it won't be long before you should be composing your own variations and your own folk songs. A couple of exercises before we go. The first one is, please play on the piano the open strings of the cello. The second one is the notes of the harmonic series on each string. Here they are for C string. Finally, please have a look in the internet for traditional music from Bali, from China, from Japan, from India, from African countries, and from Australia. And we shall be back soon with another of these introductions to composing music. Please subscribe to this channel. As I say, there are 32 exercises altogether. If you'd like written material for any of this, please feel free to write to me at the email address which is coming up now.